Hi again, everyone. Sorry about that. I um, lost connection again. Um, so similar to the uh, Code Fearless Fridays that we did way back when, I guess this uh, this one will have three parts. Um, and again, I'll see if I can maybe edit them together and upload them um, at a later date as one solid video. Um, but I'll change the titles to make sure that there is a part one, part two, and part three. So if you're watching this, um, then you know where to start and where to end, basically. Um, so what I was just talking about is the process of uh, Prodigy, and I was talking about Prodigy, and um, this idea that you know, you're know you no longer just memorizing something, but now you're actually sort of knowing it inherently, and you're, you, know, you have that knowledge instead of just sort of knowing a fact, I guess would be um, a good analogy. Um, and uh, games is, are good as well, from this idea of flexible learning. So the idea that you can actually apply skills that you learn um, in through gaming, um, again, whether that's a video game or you know dodgeball or uh, baseball, things like that, um, you can apply these skills to different situations. So especially if we go back to kind of more of the soft skills of like problem solving or uh, you know creative thinking or um, perseverance and resilience, um, if these are skills that you are learning, they're things that you have within you and you can pull out in your in your back pocket. Um, you know, and a lot of times, especially for young students, it's not necessarily being making that specific connection of like, oh, I beat that really hard, you know, level in Mario. So that means that, you know, if I sort of work through it that similar way, I can also work through this in that similar way. A lot of times it's just almost like in the back of your mind of, you know, this is how I approach a challenging situation. And you almost just do it without um, even thinking. And I know that most of us have sort of, you know, probably grown up on that phrase. Um, if you first if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Um, and that's something that just in games is an inherent thing that you learn. And so it just, again, the more sort of games that you play, um, the more it becomes inherent. Um, and I think the important thing about gamification of um, education and learning in itself um, is this idea of uh, what I call meaningful gaming. And that is to say that, you know, there's a lot of talk about gamification um, and a lot of, I guess, pushback because kids, you know, especially nowadays, um, spend most of their free time in front of screens, whether they be tablets or TVs or video games or what have you, that this idea of, you know, we don't necessarily want them to only be doing that. Um, and I totally agree. I think that you definitely need a balance, and that's why at STEM Minds, um, you know, our camp programs, for example, are always scheduled to have a chunk of sort of tech time and a chunk of what we call unplugged time. Um, because as we know, in the real world, it's never anything of just, you know, one thing. You need that balance between physical education, and you need literacy, and you need math, and you need social studies, and you need all these things to make sure that you can become um, a productive and, um, effective member of society. Um, and what gamification of learning does is, in my opinion, it sort of um, makes gaming meaningful in a way that um, kids can sort of start to reflect on what am I actually doing and why am I doing this? I think a lot of times, especially with um, some games that are catered or that are uh, picked up by um, by kids and younger generations nowadays, um, they can sometimes be missing that piece when it's used for recreation. Um, and again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Everybody needs some time to just kind of, you know, relax and shut their brain off for, you know, maybe an hour a day or so and just kind of do something that they enjoy. Um, but when that is the only way that you are engaging with games or engaging with these types of technologies, I think that's when it becomes um, more of a problem. And so, you know, going on and uh, just playing Minecraft all the time just because that's, you know, what you want to do and you're just kind of running around and destroying things, like maybe building a few things here and there. Um, in my opinion, that's not really meaningful gaming because there's not really um, a purpose behind it. Whereas if you're doing something like uh, playing Prodigy or playing maybe um, Codable, which I guess I would consider 
um, an app, but also a game. Um, there's a real reason why you're doing what you're doing. And, and part of using it in education and as a teacher, or even as a parent, if you're using it in sort of a learning context, um, part of the responsibility that comes with that is helping kids to sort of reflect on why am I doing this or why am I playing this game? Um, so what we really like about a, a program that we use Bloxels when we teach game design, um, or even some of for the older kids, things like Flow Lab and Game Maker, is it gets kids to start to um, Think about you know why why am I setting this level up the way that I am or why am I um, making the like placing the enemy right here and why am I doing this and so it gives them sort of that insight even if it's a game for fun um, into you know why why are you creating this experience the way that you're that you are. Um, if it's something more like Prodigy, it's sort of like you know um, built in. Why am I why do I need to know, you know, 12 times 12? Well, in this case, it's, you know, you're doing it because you need to be able to know math and learn math to be able to um, move on further in the game or move further through the game. And so that idea of, you know, gaming in a meaningful way and sort of reflecting on gamification as more of a, um, a general uh, subset rather than something like too specific or applying it specifically to a specific game, it's that process of, of the why or the wonder and the sort of critical thinking that comes with it where you're really sort of thinking about why you're doing something um, or why it's important instead of just um, consuming it. So again, when we have this idea of like digital creators versus digital consumers, there's always that idea of critical thinking behind it rather than just um, again, mindlessly consuming something um, without sort of thinking about that background sort of context. Um, so hopefully that gives you all some sort of a, a insight into uh, gamification and why why it's important and why there's a lot of talk about it. Um, I found some really great articles earlier um, on some education blogs and things like that that I want to share with you. It goes a little bit more um, in depth about the actual sort of learning process of um, gamifying and um, what some of the educational research says about it. So I'll post those in the comments. Um, here, I guess, or maybe in part two. I'll post them in part two. And then what I will do is post them, uh, post here in part three, um, a favorite video of a lot of the staff here at STEM Minds and one that we basically always show in our game design classes. And that's actually um, the original creators of Super Mario and what their process was going through creating that very first level in the very first Super Mario game. Um, and if you have kids at home or uh, are a teacher and you know want to sort of have a little bit more of that sort of critical conversation about games and why they're used and why we played them for you know centuries um, it's a cool sort of insight to give your kids onto um, how some of the sort of technology and things that they use every day and take for granted I guess um, actually comes to fruition um, so other than that we it is Friday um, camp is now officially over because four o'clock now. Um, so stay tuned for either later today or tomorrow. We'll be posting our photos from this week of summer camp. Um, we still have three weeks left. It's week six. Can't believe it. Um, so we still have some three weeks left and there is still some space if you are looking to uh, engage your kids in some of this type of learning and some learning. Um, before they go back to school. Um, so next week is Eager Engineers Week. So we'll do a little bit more um, of engineering. We'll do some coding. We'll do some hands-on building and design thinking projects. And then the last week of August, um, or sorry, I guess the week after that, um, would be our computer, our powerful programmers week. So a little bit more about app design, game design, um, Cody and things like that. And then we also have our bonus week, which is the last week of August before the long weekend, um, which is going to be, again, a little bit more of an exploratory theme. So even if you haven't been in our programs before, um, but you want your kids to just kind of 
see what we're all about and see what STEM is all about, um, that's a great one to sort of enroll them in and let them uh, try and explore everything that the wonderful world, world of STEM has to offer. Um, so other than that, thank you all so much for joining me today, whether you're joining live or you are um, joining at a later date. Again, my apologies for the internet connectivity issues, um, but have a great weekend and we will see you next Friday. Bye for now.